Hey, hey, my planner friends. I am coming back to you with a, another very simple and minimalistic um, layout in my B5 planner. I am su super excited, ugh, super excited, there we go, um, to do this one. It is my first one where I'm going to be using the Distress Oxide inks uh, by Tim Holtz. Uh, these are very popular inks in the um, stamping world, uh, card world, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have been building my collection as I have started it to jump into the card world a little bit more. <laughs> so, um, if you would like to know a little bit more about that, you can always jump over to my other channel. It is called Create with K, and I will link it below if you at all are interested in that. But if you are just here for planners, then you are in the right spot. So um, this is just a little bit of inspiration from Pinterest as I'm just trying to change it up every once in a while. Um, I decided to do more of a very long linear style this time. Um, I don't know if I'll use all of these boxes because honestly my other boxes were pretty good lengths, but we'll try it um, this week. And if we don't like it this week, we can always change it the next. That's what I love about bullet journaling is you aren't stuck to one layout for a month or even, a, you know, even two weeks, let alone a whole, you know, year if you've picked out a journal or a planner that is like that. So, um, here I am just rounding corners. This time I'm not really, you know, being very nitpicky about those corners. I'm just kind of doing that with my own, you know, self. Uh, sometimes I get a stencil out for it, but not this time. So, um, I am just using a, uh, what is it? The Papermate Flares as I've found that this least, um, smears pretty much on this paper of course there's different papers out there and other things will not smear as much um but yeah um that's what i found for this paper so that seventh column is going to be just divided into two um for the weekend this weekend that this week is on is going to be taken up by another baseball tournament so i shouldn't need that much space for that weekend as we will probably be gone for most of it if not all of it we haven't decided if we're staying or not so there's one dis um d distress oxide as you can see i haven't even opened these i'm not even sure if i've opened any of these that i'm about to use but okay so i had, had used at least the brown so i wanted a good uh, here's where i'm going to start bringing in the fall colors okay guys so in the beginning of september i just wasn't quite ready for fall it is definitely feeling more and more like fall around here in michigan um this week especially it's dropped on the 70s even though i think we're supposed to get a warm-up here again but um so i am using a crackling cr campfire um scattered straw gathered twigs and I also end up bringing in nope I don't I just use those three I thought I brought in one more yes I do hold on do I no I'm sorry no I don't <laughs> I'm going crazy anyways um just those three and I'm gonna just rotate them the stamp that I am using is just a cheapy one um I'm not even sure where this is from anymore. I will, I think it was just one that I bought from Joann's. I will go back because I believe I um, listed that one before. Um, I'll go back and I will put the link if I can find it down below again. Um, I love this. I bought this last year and I love this one. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I am just using the same stamp. I decided just to use the same one. Um, and kind of go down the color line. So obviously um, red, orange to yellow. Um, I could have used green, but I decided, eh, whatever. And I just kind of rotate that stamp a little bit. As you can see, I'm gonna have a little bit of issues right here. Um, I should have been using my foam, um, foam mat under this, you know, just being lazy pretty much. But the good thing about this Distress Oxide ink is that it blends really well and it honestly soaks into the, it like sits on top, it's a pigment slash dye ink. 
So it sits on top of the paper for a little bit, but then soaks in and definitely has like a softer feeling than the regular distress inks. Um, so these ones will be like a little bit more softer, chalkier almost. Um, and just beautiful, beautiful colors. So, um, after this, we are going to just use that gathering twig, um, to see here I am having issues again. <laughs> um, and I believe that this one was because I had papers in the side of it. So I was like, oh shoot. Um, why did I do that again? But all right, just cleaning off those inks. Was, did I just clean that off on my, I think I just cleaned that off on my black sweater. Maybe I had a wipe in my hand. I don't know. Anyways, um, I love how this comes out. Uh, it, as I'm sitting here looking at it now, it's going to be such a beautiful fall color. Um, and a great start to the fall as I start incorporating more and more fall and Thanksgiving into my spreads, um, from here until November. So, um, I'm pretty excited about the next couple of weeks. These are the most favorite time in my planner as we can do more and more in here and with the fall colors. So let me know uh, where you guys are from and if it's feeling anything like fall around you. I know so many of my followers and subscribers are um, from, uh, you know, the South and you guys just have no idea what we're talking about with fall weather at this point. Um, and like I said, this weekend, I just looked and it's supposed to be like 85 again. So, uh, I'll take a few days of 75. So, all right. So I just used like the viney portion of the leaves and I did that brown. Um, now I am using this studio calico, I believe that is, um, is that, is that Studio Calico? It might be Studio Calico or it might be, yeah, I think it's Studio Calico. Um, stamp set that has each of the numbers for the dates. And I am doing this in that gathered twigs color and just kind of randomly putting them there. Again, super simple, super easy setup. Uh, your pages, your weeks do not have to take, you know, 20, 30 minutes. I believe the beginning of this video. Let's see. Yep. This is, this whole spread took me, uh, 15 minutes and 42 seconds, um, before, you know, speeding it up. So this spread, it didn't take me that long. And that's even like cleaning stamps and choosing, you know, inks and all of that good stuff. Um, so like I said, every spread doesn't have to take you 45 minutes. Now there are spreads uh, sometimes, especially my title pages and other like monthly pages that do take a little bit more time sometimes. And you know, those are the spreads that I kind of like to do sometimes, but every single spread does not have to take you all of that time. Oh, I did forget that I used this. I believe this is a feed your craft stamp. So unfortunately not available anymore. Um, a weekly stamp just to put the days of the week underneath. And I think that rounded out everything well and it gave me a starting place to get those to-do list going. So thank you guys so much for being here. I truly appreciate you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I would love if you would hit that thumbs up button if you are into these more simple um, spreads, or if you would also like to see more intricate spreads put in, and I like to try and do a good mix of them, just kind of depending on how much time I have in the week, um, or how much, how I'm feeling this week. So, um, probably be on the lookout for maybe some more intricate stuff. Um, as I get to the end of this, Ooh, did put a drop shadow with that. Oh, oh, Nope. 992 Tambo. It's just like a tan uh, to kind of tie in the rest of those tans and to get uh, the plaid back. I do believe my next spread will be going back to the plaid. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.